Hey guys, it's me, Neat Code again, solving another leak code problem. This time we're doing merge K sorted linked lists. Before we've done merging two sorted linked lists, which is I, which is an easy problem. I think it was leak code 21. So if you haven't solved that one yet, I would recommend doing so because it's basically we're basically extending that problem. So this problem is actually easier than you might think for a leak code hard problem. There's some really basic ideas that we can use to solve it efficiently. So to illustrate that, I have four single node linked lists, right? So each of these linked lists only has one node, right? So five, for example. So basically, how can we merge them in an efficient way? Let me show you uh, like the general idea. So first we can merge these two, five and seven, right? So the first two nodes. When we merge them, we know that the five is smaller than the seven, so we put the five first. So now we have a partially uh, a partial linked list. So now we want to get the next value, which is three, and we want to merge it into this linked list. Again, the three is smaller than the beginning of the linked list, which is the five over here, right? So we can just put the three at the beginning. And next, we only have one value left, so we want to merge this eight into our linked list. And so what's the general idea of how to do that? Well, we're gonna have to take our eight, right? Look at look at this three, right? Well, it's bigger than the three, so we're not putting it there. Is it bigger than the five? Yep. Is it bigger than the seven? Yep, so we're gonna put it at the end. So notice how we had to iterate through every single node to find where to put eight. That's kind of a problem, but we did find the output. The output is gonna be the three, five, seven, and eight. So doing it this way is not the most efficient way to do it because notice for each node or linked list, we're going to be merging it into our current output or our current, you know, uh, result. We're going to be merging it. That's not going to be super efficient. We have K lists, right? And the total number of nodes we have is N. So every time we're merging a list, we're gonna potentially have to iterate through every single node we have so far, which could be big O of N. So the overall time complexity is gonna be K times N. Now, I bet you already know where I'm going with the solution now because the picture really makes it obvious. Why would we merge it like this when we're, by doing that, we're, we're really repeating a lot of work. That's really not the most efficient way to do it. If you know the algorithm merge sort, you know that there's a better way to do this. So, and it's a really basic idea, right? Like why merge it that way when we can merge these two and merge these two, eliminate a bit of that repeated work, right? And then when we have that, like the five and the seven, now, Using this, we're gonna merge these two together as well. And, and assuming you know the algorithm to merge two sorted linked lists, you, you, we will get the standard, we'll get the same solution, right? But let's analyze what exactly is going on here. When we did this first step, right, over here, when we went from four linked lists, right, one, two, three, four, and then we went to just two of them remaining, right? we did have to iterate, we did have to go through every single node. So this was a O of N operation, right? So it's still not cheap, it's O of N. But the question is how many times do we have to do this? In this case, we only have to do it two times, right? So we did the same thing. We took our two linked lists down here and merged them into our result. And again, we had to potentially iterate through every single one of our four nodes. So it was an O of N operation. But basically what we're doing is we're taking our lists and dividing them by two every time. So how many times can we take the K lists and divide them by two? Well, it's gonna be log K. This is the part where we speed up our algorithm. It's log K. It's log K is the number of times we're repeating this O of N step. So in this case, with this algorithm, the total time complexity is gonna be N log K. And that's a lot better than the brute force, which was N times K, right? So this is a lot better. Okay, so now let's actually get into the code. Uh, remember that we have to understand how to merge two sorted linked lists. So I'm just gonna put 
uh, that function here right now. So we'll have list one and list two as parameters and we'll return the output list. I'm not even gonna do this yet because we know this is not the most important part of the algorithm. That's the leak code easy portion. We wanna do the real part of the problem which is merging K linked lists. So the first thing I'm gonna handle is the annoying edge cases where maybe the list is null or, or the list is of length zero. In that case, we can just return an empty linked list. And now to get to the actual problem. So we're basically gonna be taking pairs of linked lists and merging them each time. And we're gonna keep doing this until there's only one linked list remaining and that's gonna be our output. So while the length of lists is greater than one, we're gonna keep reducing it, right? We're gonna keep cutting it in half. So as we merge these lists, I'm gonna put them in a new list called merged list. So now we wanna iterate through each of these lists. And each time we're gonna, we know we wanna do pairs of linked lists. So my incrementer is gonna be two. So list one is just gonna be at index i. Now list two, might be out of bounds, right? Because if we have an odd number of lists and we're incrementing by two each time, list two could be null, so we have to check for that. We'll say it's lists of i plus one, the adjacent list, but we wanna make sure. So if uh, i plus one is in bounds, so we'll check i plus one is less than the length of the list, then we'll do that otherwise we're gonna say it's none. If it's none, that's still okay, right? Because merging one non-null linked list and one null linked list is perfectly fine. We can still do that. I wanna take these two lists, merge them together with my helper function, which I haven't even written yet. And I want to take this and append it to our merged lists variable over here where we are storing the lists after we merge them. This is the way I like to do it, but I've seen people do it a different way. But now, so we want to update our lists variable because that's where we're uh, you know, actually getting our lists from. So I'm gonna update it with merged lists. So merged list is basically like a temporary variable. And of course, we're gonna keep doing that until there's only one list left, and then we're gonna return that list. So list of zero. So see, that really wasn't too bad. I mean, you might, uh, kind of struggle with a little bit of the edge cases, that's perfectly fine. But once you get the idea, you see it's really not that bad. Now we've reduced it to an easy problem. We know how to merge two linked lists. I've done it before in a video, but I'll uh, type it out again really quickly. And maybe if you're lucky, your interviewer won't even want you to merge the lists anyway. <laughs> but let me go ahead and show off and try to speed run it and hopefully not have a bug and embarrass myself. And I'm speed running it. I'm showing off, but I literally solved this problem right before I recorded this video. So uh, it's not really a show off. I'm, br I'm basically typing basically off of memory, so just get this over with. And I'm a super slow typer. Once you guys, honestly, once you guys practice enough leak code, you'll probably be 10 times better than me and wonder. Okay, so let's dummy dot. Okay, and once again, let me prove to myself that I don't have any bugs. And I do. So, okay, so it was pretty small. Uh, merged lists uh, dot append. We're appending to the output or appending to this list. And hopefully that is good enough. 
Okay, of course I get messed up with the typos. Merged list. I guess the confusing part was that this variable name is pretty similar to this function name. Probably should have done it a little differently. Okay, but it does work, so hopefully you get the general idea. It's not too bad of a problem. There are actually a lot of ways to solve it, even a heap solution. Uh, but I think kind of sticking with this is fine. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have uh, any tips and tricks, you can feel free to share them with me and feel free to suggest any other problems that you would like me to solve. And I'll see you pretty soon, maybe.